crumbs that I don't even know who this is by. <sighs> I'm dreaming of a white. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my December wrap up for 2021 part one. I read a total of 15 books this month. Granted, it is only December 29th as I am filming this so I feel like maybe I can get one more in. So that number may change but as of right now I've read 15 books so I will be splitting this wrap up into three separate parts so if you guys are interested in part two and three that'll be linked down below once it's eventually uploaded. So in this wrap up I will be talking about the first five books that I read for the month of December. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have is The Trouble with Hating You by Sajni Patel and I give this 2.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Laya Thacker who is a successful biochemical engineer who is very focused and driven on her career. Her overbearing and controlling father is dead set on arranging her marriage so when she discovers that her latest family dinner is actually a setup for her to meet the very charming Jay, she bolts out the back door before they have a chance to say hello. When he shows up at her work the next day, hired as the new lawyer to help her struggling company avoid bankruptcy, she is both surprised and appalled. They quickly realize that they have the ability to infuriate each other like no one else, but they also realize that as they spend more time together, they may be meant for each other, and it's like the story of that. I wasn't the biggest fan of this, hence the 2.5 out of 5 stars, but I did like the way that the author explored past trauma and how these two characters really helped each other out with that. I really liked how neither of the characters expected the other one to change for them. They accepted the other's flaws and they kind of just rolled with it. I really liked the banter between Laia and Jay. I think that they had good chemistry and I am all for a enemies to lovers trope. We all know this, but there was just something about this that I couldn't get behind. I personally think that it may have been Laia. She was just so negative and angry all the time, which is understandable for how she was treated in the community, but it just got super old really quickly to me. I also just felt that it was very slow in my opinion. It took me a really long time to actually get into the story and and want to finish it, but I will say that I really did enjoy the friendship between Laia and her two girls. I think that they were all very supportive of one another, which we love to see. I am actually going to be reading the second book in the series only because I was sent a copy by the publisher, which is why I read the first one in the first place. The second book actually follows Laia's friend Preeti, so I'm hoping that because it's following a different character I'm gonna like it a lot more, but we'll have to see when I actually pick it up. But like I said, 2.5 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins which I gave 5 out of 5 stars. I really really liked this and it was definitely a surprise to me. This follows 25 year old Lux who after the death of her mother she decides to move to Maui following her charming boyfriend Nick to travel with him around the world on his boat. When she arrives in Maui she learns that their plans need to be put on hold because the Susanna needs a new engine, one that Nico cannot afford. Now months later Nico comes to Lux with amazing news. He has been offered $50,000 by two college girls, Brittany and Emma to sail them to the isolated Moreau Island. Lux is very hesitant at first but she reluctantly agrees to join them on their trip and when they arrive on this island they realize that they are not alone. A beautiful couple has already docked and made themselves at home. Jake and Eliza quickly become friends with the group but then a third stranger arrives on the island making everybody very uncomfortable and blowing some secrets straight out of the water. I love loved this way more than I thought I was going to. I, right from the beginning, was hooked. I could not stop turning the pages. Although the plot is pretty predictable at times, there were a lot of times where I had no idea where the story was going. The story is definitely not plausible. Like, this would never happen in real life, but the writing style and the whole tone of the story is just so addictive, you can't help but get sucked into it. I was so invested in these characters. I read this book in one sitting. I was so addicted to finding out what secrets 
people were hiding from each other. None of these characters are necessarily likable, but you couldn't help but be drawn into their personalities. The story is actually told in past and present timelines, which I found very intriguing and interesting as a way to learn about these characters' backstories because they are so complex. <laughs> The main point of view is Lux and you do get a lot of information from her but we also got chapters from other characters in the story and we also got bits and pieces of the dark history of the island through like text messages, emails, letters which I thought was a really fun and interesting way to tell that part of the story. I actually listened to this on audio and I think that the narrator did a really great job getting these characters across and the creepy vibes of the island were just so well done. I definitely recommend this to people who like thrillers and like isolated island stories. This was a really great one. Five out of five stars. I definitely recommend. Next up I have Serendipity. This is a YA anthology featuring 10 authors who are writing about 10 common romantic tropes. I ended up giving this a three out of five stars. I was initially drawn to it because one, it was edited by Marissa Meyer and I will read anything that Marissa Meyer puts out. And two, I was under the impression that it was these common romantic tropes but like flipped on their heads and like made super unique but that was not the case. It was literally just these 10 common romantic tropes. So I was a little disappointed because of that. I had way higher expectations than what I should have. It was an extremely fast read. I did finish it in one sitting and it did feature some of my favorite romantic tropes but I don't think that any of the stories really stood out to me or were particularly like blow your your mind amazing. It was just very average so I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. Next up I have Crumbs by Danny Sterling. This is a graphic novel that features a young seer named Ray. She befriends a barista named Lori at a magical bakery where she discovers friendship and first love and I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I think that this book was sweet and I enjoyed it for the most part but I was left just wanting more from it. I liked the overall message and how Ray was eventually able to decide for herself what she wanted in life. I also liked how supportive every single character was of each other in this book. I think that the friend group was really great but unfortunately I was just bored throughout most of it and I just wanted something, anything to happen. I just kept finding myself putting the book down and avoiding picking it back up which is you know never a good sign so I ended up giving it a 2 out of 5 stars. And then the final book that I will be talking about for this part of the wrap up is Bad Luck Bridesmaids by Alison Rose Greensburg and I gave this 4 out of 5 stars. This follows Zoe Marks who has been a bridesmaid three times. Four brides who've never made it down the aisle. Crowning herself Bad Luck Bridesmaids she has decided that her view on marriage has been tainted and it is definitely not for her. So when her perfect boyfriend Rylan proposes she is desperate to have her mind changed but she is unable to take that plunge leaving the both heartbroken. When her best friend Hannah comes to her asking her to be her one and only bridesmaids in her upcoming wedding to a man that she has just met in Ireland she is very hesitant but reluctantly agrees because it is her best friend after all. Zoe decides that if she can get Hannah down the aisle that means that she will be ready to walk down the aisle herself and it's the story of that. This is another one that I did not think I was going to like as much as I did. It was a very quick fun read. The writing style is very addictive. I really liked Zoe as a main character. She was so flawed and she knew it and embraced it which I really loved. I really liked the self-discovery journey that she started and where she ended up in the end. I also really loved Hannah. I think she was such an incredible friend to Zoe. They were both just so supportive to one another no matter what was going on in their life. They dove headfirst into it together which we love to see. The biggest complaint I have about this book is the way that Rylan and Zoe acted at Hannah's wedding which I will not go into detail because I don't want to spoil anything but I was just not a big fan of that but other than that I really enjoyed this book. So I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars. I definitely recommend it to people who enjoy rom-coms or like self-discovery books. It's more of like a chiclet than anything but I really enjoyed it so 
check it out if you're interested. Alright everybody, so those were the first five books that I read in the month of December 2021. If you're interested in the other two wrap-ups that will feature the other 10 books that I read, those will be linked down below whenever they're uploaded. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!